Dr. Gregory Houghton here. Almost every interview that I do, I get the question about Asafa Powell and whether or not his underachievement to some degree, if it's directly related to his mental toughness, his mental preparation. Now I would like to answer that question once and for all to let the world know that the real situation that affected Powell's performance over the years is not solely mental. In fact, it is more physical than even mental. Now, when I went to the information on Asafa Powell, it was very clear that Asafa had a physical limitation after he received the injury in 2005 and one particular article I would like to read to support what I'm saying is the article that was published on the 29th of July 2005 and it reads Asafa Powell injury update and in this injury this is the first time he sustained the injury to this magnitude and it clearly states why he struggled over the years and let me show you the article reads asafa powell who earlier this year broke the world 100 meter record in a blazing time of 977 seconds went down with a groin injury last friday night in the 100 meter final at the norwich union super grand prix at crystal palace london immediately after the injury was sustained powell flew to germany for treatment from a homeopathic specialist, Dr. Muller. After a series of MRI and ultrasound scans, it was determined that he had a 2.5 centimeter tear in his abductor longus muscle in the region of the bone tendon junction. His physiotherapist, Mark Young, stated, the region of tendon that is torn is particularly slow to heal when compared to a tear in the belly of the muscle. And this is a quote from Mark Young. Dr. Muller was initially doubtful that Powell would be ready to run by the 6th of August in the 100 meter heats in Helsinki. This was the world championship in 2005. And although treatment has gone well and he is on his way back to health, the doctor is still ruling out the individual 100 meter in Helsinki. This is keynote right here, you know. Powell's agent, Paul Doyle, is equally concerned for his possibilities in Helsinki. He said, it's a type of situation that if the 100 meter race was on the end of the championships, we would be very optimistic of his chances. Every day, every hour counts in healing an injury like this. This is what Paul Doyle said. Powell himself was reluctant to comment, but did say that he was devastated. You train with a focus all year. And to have that taken away, leave you feeling empty. He also said, I hope to be able to run the relay in Helsinki and help bring a medal back for Jamaica. The article continues. He has been marked down to run in Zurich, talking about the Grand Prix meet on the 19th of August. And he has begun negotiation with many other post Helsinki meets. But Doyle says, Asafa will not step on the track in the relay or any other meet until we are 100% sure he is healed and 100% ready to go. Now, there's some key notes here because it clearly states the type of injury that he sustained. He talked about the, the time frame that he had to be able to semi-recover from the injury, 
but the doctor was concerned because the doctor believed that a type of injury such as this, the comparison was made to a cut in the stomach, in the belly, that it is a very hard muscle to heal. Now here is what Asafa should have done because an injury of this magnitude will pose a problem for the future. This problem did not require a quick fix. What you find that in most cases the Europeans and the Americans with the money and the connection that they would rather lose out on a season than to chase that quick money. They would make sure that the problem is properly researched, properly fixed, and then they would come back bigger, better, with a vengeance. Not in Asafa's case. Now some people were saying that Asafa was chasing the money, and because he was chasing the money, he did not give his body the injury enough time to heal. When an athlete experiences an injury such as this, you must identify the weak spots and then you must fix it. And some people are saying that the root of this evil was chasing the money. In my opinion, Asafa should have sat out. He should have fixed the problem and then he should have returned. I remember in 2000, and I want to say 11 or 2012, that Asafa made the 100 meter final at his national championship and he sustained or aggravated the same injury because it's the same injury over and over again. And what he did, he flew to Miami the morning, the Saturday morning. He got treatment and then flew back to Jamaica to compete in the final. I think he finished second that year. So the big issue that we have with Asafa here, and people are saying that it is a mental situation because he would run great in the rounds, but he was not able to come back in the final and duplicate that performance. Or he would run great at the Grand Prix meets, but he wasn't able to run or duplicate that same performance when he was at the World Championship. But here is a situation that Asaf has faced. That because of that type of injury, and because the injury was not properly healed, his body was not able to handle the round. I want you to think about it this way. Just imagine that you have a cut, and you did not give the cut enough time to heal. And each time you aggravate that cut, then a lot of things will happen. The cut might start to bleed again, or it may take a longer time for the cut to properly heal. So Asafa's body could not tolerate the rounds. But where the injury was sustained, it seemed as if the wear and tear would not allow him to duplicate the level of performance that he was capable of or he was not able to duplicate that level of performance that would give him the best chance to win a medal so sometimes when people see him you know losing out 50 meters out it appears that it was a mental issue but it was not primarily a mental issue physically his body wasn't able to sustain the blows through the round for him to duplicate that performance. Now, it is true that when you're not able to perform back to back after the first world championship, after the second world championship, then it starts to affect your mental aptitude. It starts to affect your confidence. So the injury prevented him from dominating the championship. Now everything that we do that affect us on a physical level, in most cases, it will affect you also on a mental level, a psychological level. 
The solution to Asafa's issue or problem would have been for his coach, his managers, his therapist, and also himself, that they should have all sat down and think about the best possible options. And they should have put aside training for a little, try to recover and properly fix the problem. This is what history has shown. And this is the reason Asafa was never able to produce the type of results that all of us expected of him in the final. His mind played a part in all of this, but his body could just not handle the physical stress of the back-to-back -back performance. I thank you very much for listening. I'm Dr. Gregory Horton. Have a blessed day.